It's funny, I had a pastor one time comment that I doubt that he had seen my video, but I was thinking, you know, I like to wear different clothes at different times because people often are influenced by what they see rather than what God tells them. And so I know that people are very much so people of sight rather than people of faith. They will judge things by the outward things and not by the things of the heart. A lot of times they'll make those snap decisions based upon their first impressions. You know, the first impressions that they have that they can look at someone and say, ooh, ah, ee, or ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, tang, wah, wah, bing, bang, because that's usually what happens when you go to the witch doctor to see what he might say. You know, the witch doctor that gives you, you know, the magic cure, the special jelly beans, you know, that grow into a jack and a beanstalk. You know, the fantasies that you have that you create when you put on clothes to make yourself look better, to supposedly act better, to be better than what you really are. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you clean up the car, you know, to sell it. You know, you clean up the house to make it look better when you have visitors. But who are you really? I mean, where the rubber meets the road, when you get up in the morning, what are you like? What kind of person are you throughout your day? A lot of people can put on a good show for an hour, or at work they can put on the work persona for eight hours, or 10 or 12, however many hours you work. But what happens when you're in that crisis mode, or when you first wake up? What is the first thoughts that come into your head? Oh God, what another day. Oh, misery on misery on misery. You know, and that's one thing that the Bible did talk about in Ecclesiastes. Vanity is vanity and all is vanity. Well, I guess that's one way of looking at life. And that's one perspective. You see, if you just looked at the outward things, I guess you could say in some ways that, ooh, they're terrible people. You know, like how sometimes people will say that about you or someone else when they catch you at the wrong moment, in the wrong place, at the wrong time. But is that really who you are? Who are you really? Or what is God making you into being? How are you becoming more than what you are? Because you see, a lot of times people will make misinterpretations. They will make mistakes about what they think they know as opposed to what God knows. And you know, I like that because you see, God knows so much more than I do. God can see a person and say, hey, have you checked out my servant Job? And I can say, yeah, I did, Lord. I looked at Job and man, that sucker, he lost his wife, he lost his kids, he lost his car, he lost his house, he lost his job, and here he is sitting on a bunch of, a bunch of, Ooh, as a matter of fact, he's pretty disgusting. He's sitting on his own vomit. He's sitting on his own boils. He's, he's like cursed of God. Yuck, ooey, screwy. I mean, yeah, I've looked at Job. What kind of servant of yours is he? I mean, what did you do to him? And we know the story of Job, or do we? You see, on the surface, it looks so obvious that Job is cursed by God. And yet, before the story starts, we read in the beginning, God tells Satan, have you checked out my servant Job? And we look at him and go, wait a minute, what are you saying here, God? You're telling me that Satan looks at people and their lives? Satan can influence people and their lives based upon what you're letting him do? You mean to tell me that you look at my life and you can choose to use it any way you want to? Wow, there's more to this story than meets the eye, isn't there? As a matter of fact, we're already told some things are true about that story that maybe you don't accept. One is that God is in control. And two is that God can choose to do anything he wants to do according to his own will. Now I'm always interested in certain things that I know that are true all the way through the Bible. Some things, you know, people say, well, you know, that was in the Old Testament but not the New. Well, no, some things are literally true all the way through. One of those things that I've learned in my life is that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purposes. In other words, if God has a purpose, He has a plan. If He has a plan, then He has something in store that is according to His will. And His will is going to work out for good because I love Him. 
because I'm operating according to His direction. No matter what comes my way, it's going to work out in some way good, even when it looks bad. Now, other people may not understand that. They may not realize the circumstances don't dictate the will of God. And that's why I have a problem sometimes with people that are circumstantial Christians. You see, a Christian will often make certain statements that sound good, that they think is good, that they try to make good, but they really aren't good, not in the long term. Because you don't know what God may be doing in a person's life. So, a lot of times people will say, well, you know, I, I, I know that God always blesses me, so I'm only going to go wherever there's a blessing and not a curse. That's interesting, because you see, Job was in a place of blessing, and then he got cursed, or at least it looked like it. And it went on for a long time. Jesus, quite frankly, looked like the man most cursed of all people, for he had never and never has there been anyone that suffered as he suffered. And no one has ever had that kind of intimacy with God and then had God separate himself from that intimate relationship. It's interesting when we look on the outward things. And yet we still know that if that one word is true, then all words would be true that God has said. All things is all all. Does it mean everything works together for good? You mean to tell me that if I lost a child in an abortion, or if I lost a child in a tragedy, if I lost a child, period, that could be working together for good? How could that be good? How could bad things happen to good people unless the bad things are an interpretation of what we say is good and bad? You see, if all things work together for good, then bad things don't happen to good people because it's working for good, isn't it? You see, there's a problem with the way man looks at things. And that's why sometimes these interpretations even that pastors give fail because they don't examine what the question is. Because the question isn't whether bad things happen to good people. The question is, do all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose? Yes. So if a tornado happens to somebody, is that a good thing? All things work together for good. Is it a good thing or is it just working together for good? You see, that's why you need to look carefully. You need to think about, you need to talk about what God is doing. Not what you think God is doing, not what you interpret God is doing. Because see, Job sat down and he started to interpret God. He started to say, look, I don't care what you're telling me, and his friends came alongside. You know, they spoke to him about pretty much every kind of philosophical perspective you could come up with. Joe's friend said, hey, look, you must have blown it, buddy, because look how bad your life is. It was wonderful, and you were a great man, and now you're crushed. You're smashed. You're destroyed. Even his own wife, who knows him better than everyone else, says, ha, curse God and die. Because guess what? You've blown it, buddy. You screwed up. Obviously. And yet, he didn't, did he? And yet, he didn't fail God. At least, some people say he didn't fail God. I kind of look at it and go, you know, he comes pretty close. You know, It's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Though he did not curse him, you know, he, he was blessed in the end because he passed through with what God interpreted or God said was, you know, according to his grace, acceptable to him. Though he did challenge him, and he says, hey, where were you? you know, and he challenged the different counselors that they had. But God used all of them in some ways to demonstrate for us something that we need to learn. We need to get off of this theological merry-go-round that people keep playing with these stupid statements to try to make it easier for somebody to understand what's going on. You either accept what God says or you don't. That's it. Because if you don't accept that God loves you, You'll never accept the fact that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are calling to his purpose. You see, a tornado destroying a house isn't a bad thing. A tornado destroying a house could be a great thing when God's going to move you someplace else. If he can't get you out of the place where you're at, he's going to get you out of the place where you're at. He's going to move you on, one way or another. If God has said, get out, and you didn't, guess what? You got what you should, because you didn't do what he said to do. You see, that's why the whole interpretation of 
bad things happen to good people is false. It starts off with a false idea, with a false concept, and with a false circumstance. None of it is true. It's not bad things happen to good people. That's false. All things work together for good, period. I don't understand why people can't interpret that scripture and know it, and I don't understand why people can't understand how to counsel. I know people right now in Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, that can't answer that question. Why do bad things happen to good people? And they come up with these ridiculous statements. I'm thinking, are you kidding me? What are you trying to do, make the person feel good? And it's true. If I sat down with whoever was telling me whatever statement that they're making up about, well, you know, we want to comfort the person, so we just we want, we want to lead them in the right way, but we don't want to tell them directly, bluntly, hey, it's going to work out for good. Why not? Job it did. God will. God will do for that person what you can't do with your own idea of trying to put a spin on why bad things happen to good people. And you know, I still hear it to this day. I mean, I've heard Greg Laurie teach it. I've heard Chuck, well, not Chuck Smith doesn't really get into that one. Because he says things differently and never lets himself be put into that position of answering that in a direct way. So, when I hear people try to interpret that, I'm always questioning them, are you contradicting something in Scripture by your answer? And I've heard pastors do it, famous pastors. People that are supposed to be well known, you know, that are supposed to be like up there in knowledge. And I keep saying, hey, if a, if a, if a person who's ignorant, like me, can come up with the answer, just by simply saying, hey, look, all things work together for good, so those laws of order, call you as perfect. Is God a liar? No, if he's not, well, then God's true. Let his word be true and every man be found a liar. So guess what? It works together for good. Even your bad, what, God had, what somebody had meant for evil, God worked out for good. The bad of the crucifixion worked out for good for the resurrection. Hello? Your child dying could work out for the benefit of everyone else around you because guess what? They can console you and now you can be consoled. God has worked it out for good. The point is, is that there's nothing, whether it be, and I'm using that example because most people can't even answer the question of abortions or questions of, you know, this idea they had to create of some kind of age of accountability that's a false teaching. It's a false doctrine, false teaching, and evangelicals won't even touch that one because they would rather, well, you know, I don't know, maybe, it could be, let's go so, and, you know, they play with it because it's easier to counsel somebody in a negative way you know, even though it's not according to Scripture, then to actually tell them the truth. Hey, there is no such thing as accountability. Born in sin, raised in sin, die in sin, period. That's what God, beginning to end, is faithful and true and just. And whatever he does is righteous in all his ways. So if he puts your child in heaven, great. If he puts him in hell, great. Either way, God is righteous and true and perfect in all his ways. He loves. So he's going to allow for those things to be accomplished for good. Because all things work together for good to those that love the Lord according to His purpose, including hell and judgment. So, where do you get off, and where does anyone get off with this idea of somehow creating circumstance, making circumstance, or being anything less than, wow, let us bow down and accept God's will, because He's going to accomplish His purpose anyway. Let us recognize that God is greater and more holy than we ever imagined. Let us put him back on the throne and say, Hey, you know what? I've been walking in my own understanding for a long time now. And, you know, the, the longer I'm saved, the more I realize I don't know, but you do. And what you're doing is righteous and true. Because that's what's going to happen very soon now. There's going to come alongside a lot of pastors that have made some really bold statements that are wrong scripture. They are wrong biblically. Actually, they contradict themselves in their own teaching. And the reason is, is to make people feel good. Even though they don't teach the feel good doctrine. is good, but the content is wrong. Let God be found faithful and every man a liar. Turn to the Lord your God. Turn it around and recognize that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are calling to according to his purpose. It's not about bad things happening to good people. It's about God
God's will being done, and it is good. You see, His will be done in heaven and on earth, even accepting what you don't understand. Why do bad things happen to good people? The question is always, how is God going to make this for good? Because I love him and I'm called according to his purpose. That's the question. Never fall into the the truth. And the truth is all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So bad things don't happen to good people. It's a good thing. Reject this idea that people try to make something out of false statements portrayed as though they were some kind of theological question when they're not. It's a false doctrine, it's a false teaching, and it's a false premise of saying why do bad things happen to good people because it's not about bad things happening to good people it's about God causing all things to work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes in other words God is making it good and what God has made good no man can make crooked and what God's made straight no man can make crooked what God has made crooked no man can make straight in other words you're putting God back in control of the answer as opposed to putting man trying to interpret God and then explain it to somebody that's suffering. I'm sorry, suffering is not a negative. It's not bad things happening. Matter of fact, most of the time I look at it and when somebody says to me, why do bad things happen to good people? I say, they don't. Good things happen to good people. And whether you call it bad or good, God calls it all things working together for good. That's the way it works. The scripture will always answer any question you have, but use the scripture for the answer and not your way of rewording it. Because rewording it, you're going to get yourself into a logic debate where you're stating something that Satan will twist it back on yourself and you'll be beat to death with your own words. Always allow scripture to answer the word of God and reveal God himself in the answer so that God is glorified and not man's intellect. Because the stupidity of the argument is always made manifest by the person asking it. The reality is the person that asks doesn't know God at all. And that's the facts. So don't get caught up in the doctrines of men or the dogmas of men because they only lead to misinterpretation, misapplication, and misinformation. Always let the Word of God speak for itself and let your doctrine be simple and true. God is real. God is true and God can reveal for himself who he is as he does through his own words which is the word of God.